My name is Matt, welcome back to the shop and someone asked a really good question which is about the casting one. Now I've done all three videos, I will put this at the end of all of them 3D videos, so this will be part 4. Uh, but someone did ask, how come you have to use shield gas like argon or when you do heliarchin which is a helium argon mix for TIG welding or any kind of welding, why are you using shield gases like CO2 and stuff like that? But when it comes to... Um, Casting, you don't do that. They don't do these things in inert atmospheres. Now, there is one or two casting processes that are really high-tech that do use shield gassing and inert gassing and stuff like that. That's generally when they get an alloy down to beautiful purity uh, and when they're trying to make single-element castings and stuff. So if you're trying to make ingots of pure aluminium, that's why when you go on eBay and look at these little cubes of aluminium, even the aluminium costs like 30 quid. One, because the measurement is bang on. Number two is some someone's put some way, uh, effort into it. And uh, number three is because these are like 99.999999% aluminium. So, uh, but why do you have to do it when you do welding? And why don't you have to do it when you do casting? So, when you do welding, uh, let's get some big pens, as soon as I've got them. Uh, when you do welding, you have your substrate metal, and um, we've back grooved it, like so, we've back cut it like this, we've put a relief in so we can get our new welding. When you strike up your arc on your TIG welder or your MIG welder, like this, um, there is oxygen, there's an oxide layer on top of the aluminium, it's reacted with the air, you've ground this so there's oxygen in there, like so. Um, there's oxygen in the air around you, there's nitrogen. Not only that is these aluminiums, even though you clean them really well, will not be ship free. And the aluminium itself won't be ship free either. It will be close, but it will be shit in it. And when you strike an arc, this little fuzzy arc of electrons going holy shit backwards and forwards because you're doing AC for aluminium. Um, when you do this, because of the heat and because of buoyancy, believe it or not, a lot of things will float on aluminium. Any element that is lighter than aluminium will float on it. So now you've made a molten pool of it, the shit floats. Same way as in when they use tin um, with float glass. They actually usually use a hydrogen atmosphere. As far as I'm aware, I'm not a glass expert, but I remember hearing once or reading somewhere they use a hydrogen-rich atmosphere and they have tin and they float glass on top of it. Why? Because, well, glass floats on tin because tin is more dense than the silicates that are in glass. Any rod. When you do this, what's going to happen is, is that things will float. So you will have a load of shit on top of your weld like this and it's actually permeating through the aluminium as you add more and more, temp more, and more heat to it. Now, this is fine and this is why with TIG welding we have, and because of the aluminium oxide layer, we use uh, DC neg um, electrode negative and electrode positive, or electrode DC negative and electrode DC positive, but with AC it's flipping between the two. Um, so basically in a sense you are blasting heat at it but then you are also drawing an arc the other way and that's lifting off and we call this the cleaning action and you can see it's this frosty little weird shit that goes on when you do TIG welding um, we are literally liberating the oxygen we've just heated it up and then it will blast it up with that um, the current is flowing from the workpiece to the electrode so it blasts up brings it to the surface and it boils off literally the oxygen just boils off and it stops it being in the well because at the end of the day you're you're bashing material so when you add a bashing <laughs> when you add some filler rod in like this um again that's got shit on it you know most people clean the welds but a lot of people don't clean the filler rods um but you're adding that in and you are literally if you want to look at it like this it's a chasm you know this is a chasm like this and you're going to drop new aluminium in it which means that you are going to trap shit in it. 
but because it's still molten, this shit is going to try and float in it. And this basically what its inclusions, it makes it porous, it makes it fucking horrible. So we are trying to stop stuff from the outside world getting in, the air and stuff, but also the shit that tries to boil off. Um, we want to, especially with argon, it's a good gas to have because basically as soon as this oxygen boils off, the, um, oh, what's the word? The argon basically um, falls, it's heavier, so it falls down, displacing the oxygen out of the way. This is why you have to have a constant feed of argon because it's just, if you could see, it's just pissing out like, you know, dry ice just pisses out everywhere and rolls off and does awesome uh, thriller Michael Jackson effects and all the rest of it. So it's, oh, that fucking board rubber, I need to clean that. I'll do that after this video. Um, but yeah, you know, so basically you're trying to stop the outside world getting in, you're trying to stop shit on the surface being pushed into the weld. Um, and you are trying to also allow these ga these gases like oxygen and nitrogen and stuff to basically bubble out and piss off. Um, when you do casting, why don't you do this? The same thing happens with casting. So when you, if you go watch uh, Myford Boy, he'll have a crucible like this. And he will fill this with aluminium and you heat it up and it gets a skin on top of it. It gets a foreskin on top of it, and all this foreskin, this um, dross, is all the impurities that have floated to the top. This is just shit. We don't want this stuff. You try and scrape this off. You also use degassing agents. A good one is uh, salt. You can put salt in a little bit of aluminium, chuck that in. You can actually get flux tablets and stuff, and degassing tablets. To be quite honest, they're really quite cheap, and they're a, lot, a bit better than the salt. When you chuck these things, you've got... Um, Oh, I forgot the name for it, but it's to remove hydrogen so you don't get hydrogen embrittlement in your castings. And you basically try and scrape as much of this shit off. Generally what you do is you will melt your stock, so your feedstock, your bits of wheel. Aluminium wheels are a great thing for casting because they are a very good casting alloy to start with. Um, just chop them up into bits, chuck them in there, heat them up, take as much of the dross and shit off as you can off the top, degassing agents, put your flux in, same kind of thing, scrape all that dross that comes to the surface and then you usually pour ingots and then what you've done is you've got ingots yourself so the majority of the shit that's in the that's even on the alloy wheels has fucked off. When you basically remelt this stuff later on, they're in ingots, you, you've got a good idea of how long these are going to take to melt. There'll be dross again, degassing agents, all that shit goes in, you take the dross off the top and then you pour it in. The difference is is that you just have this surface here that can literally be centimetres thick of shite but the rest of your aluminium, these lids are a knobhead to get off the rest of the aluminium after it's been degassed and all the rest of it is pretty much good aluminium um, aluminium alloys when they are sand cast are pretty weak and pretty porous anyway because there's still all sorts going on and there's still gas bubbles in here that because of aluminium surface tension they haven't made it the way out this is why castings are weaker than just say hot rolled and cold rolled stuff and obviously forgings when we're looking at steel and stuff like that because the same principles kind of apply um so yes you know when you're doing welding this thin crusty shit on top that might be 50 microns is enough to get in there and fuck your weld up but you've got to remember when you actually do your reliefs and all the rest of it, your back cutting and stuff not back cutting that's when you cut the back of the weld when you have your all your welding reliefs and all the rest of it to add filler in there so you get good penetration well it's all on these sides is all this shit you've just cut it with a grinding disc but your grinding discs are mucky as fuck you know there's shit everywhere that's the problem with anything there's always shit somewhere and when you're doing welding, because you're just doing minute spots, this is going to matter. You're trying to fuse two bits of material together with a rod that probably is never, generally, it's very rare that you actually weld two pieces of aluminium with the exact same filler rod. Um, because different manufacturers have all sorts of different... And this is why castings are a dickhead to weld. Because manufacturers use different, their own blends in a sense of alloys to make their wheels and engine castings and stuff and trying to find a good alloy that will weld these th that weld these things together can be a pain in the ass um, but usually you find something you like and you stick with it 
but yeah, the reason why is, is it's this surface that's the shit. You try and get rid of as much of that as you can. The other thing is, is when you come to, oh, I was gonna use that bloody board rubber again. When you come to pour it, you are actually pouring from the bottom. You know, when someone spits in your bottle of Coke and you got that to tip it out and it just floats to the top, which is now at the back of the bottle, you can never get rid of it, fuckers. <laughs> but you know what I mean? When you come to pour your aluminium out of your crucible, like so, generally all the shit is floating on top of here when you're pouring this stuff out. And most of it ends up on your riser, uh, on your fucking... Yes, most of it ends up at the top in your runners and your risers and your gates and your feeds and stuff like that, not your gates. Um, but most of it ends up there anyway, so that's not part of the casting. So hallelujah for shit floating on the top of aluminium. The only problem is, is that if there are any elements that are in there shit-wise that are heavier than aluminium, they will sink and end up in your casting. If they're heavy enough, they'll end up sinking to the bottom of the crucible and you'll never have to worry about them. For home casting and stuff, you don't really have to worry about this too much. For industrial stuff, they basically make sure that their ingots are very good quality before they even start. Hope that makes sense, and I'll see you in a bit.